We are at a crucial time in the market right now. No one knows whether it's gonna go up or down. And that is stressing me out. But what if the market doesn't do either? What if tomorrow it stops going up and down and it just completely flatlines forever? Will I still be able to make money investing? Let's take a look. Welcome back everybody, my name's Paul. If you've never met me before, I recently started investing and I'm trying to figure out the best way to make some money. As a brand new investor, I spend a lot of unnecessary time focusing on that return number, whether it's red or green. And I know you guys do it too. I can't help it and every now and then I need to drag myself back and really have a think about my investment strategy. The market right now appears to be going up and down ridiculously. Over the past few weeks, it hasn't really gone anywhere. It got me thinking about whether there's actually gonna be a recovery or even if there's actually gonna be a crash either. It's very possible that we could be stuck like this for another couple of years. Has anyone else felt that the news recently has kind of changed? It's gone from every single news outlet trying to get your attention with, oh my God, it's gonna crash or oh my God, it's gonna recover to, oh, well, we don't really know. Maybe this is just gonna be like this for a while. Goldman Sachs needs to make up its fucking mind. Every day it comes out with a new theory. So I've really needed to pull myself back and think again about the logic of what I'm doing. If you've seen any of my previous videos, you might remember this graph. This graph is my entire justification for investing. It shows that while there's been loads of crashes over the course of the American market, America has always recovered to new highs. And that's the main reason why I invest, because history shows that over the long term, my money will grow. While history generally repeats, it's not guaranteed. Sometimes markets can trade sideways. Trading sideways is just a term that describes markets when they aren't going up or down over a long period of time. And it's not an impossibility. The Japanese Nikkei has been trading sideways since the early 90s. And in 1929, the S&P 500 traded sideways for a long time. It took about 26 years for the market to fully recover. So this isn't something that happens often, but it does happen. And there is arguments out there that the FTSE 100 is slowing down and could eventually trade sideways as well. In the short term of maybe about one to two years, if we don't see a full recovery or even another crash, we could just be sitting in a recession for ages. This is another reason why I quite like the dividend investment strategy. The dividend investment strategy tells me that I shouldn't really care about that return number. I shouldn't care about whether it's plus, whether it's minus, whether it's green, whether it's red. The theory is I'll still be gaining dividends even though the company's stock prices aren't really growing. I love indexes and ETFs. I still think they're the best way you can maintain growth over a long period of time, but they don't always have the best dividend yield that you can get with maybe a couple of companies. So that's what I've been thinking about this week. If the market's trading sideways, then I should be thinking about it with a sideways mindset. Growth stocks might also be good in a sideways economy. If you can get in early on a startup and let it grow, that's still gonna earn you money. But to me, that's quite high risk. It's why I've chosen the dividend investment strategy. Because even if that return goes up or down, I'm still getting dividend payments from companies, which is increasing my wealth. I know that lots of companies are cutting dividends right now. Do we have to talk about Shell again? <laughs> but some, like Johnson & Johnson, have even increased their dividends. If the market goes down, I see that as an opportunity to buy more companies at greater value to get more dividends. If the market value goes up, that's a bonus to me. I'll be getting more return. But what I've really tried to drill into myself is try to invest with a sideways mindset. That's going to be my book title one day, isn't it? Investing with a sideways mindset. <laughs> fucking stupid. I've just got to keep putting money in, cost fucking averaging, and keep acting like the market is trading sideways. By the way, if you're also hearing that in Ollie Williams' voice, good for you. So with this sideways mindset, in mind. I've made quite a few changes to my portfolio this week just to sort of refine it down a little bit. I've now gone down from 44 investments to 37. Four stocks ended up getting sold on a stop limit. That was Royal Caribbean, Apple, and the two carnivals. They all took a big hit on Monday and my stop limit saved me from losing too much. I actually saved myself quite a bit of money on that that's now sitting in cash ready for me to cost average back in. I also sold Facebook. I had a bit of a rethink on Facebook. I was thinking, 
Why do I own it? Do I think it's going to be around? All that sort of stuff. It doesn't pay a dividend and I feel like Facebook is losing a bit of steam. If it paid a dividend, I'd definitely be keeping it. But right now, if it's just not interested in giving back, I'm happy to just take a bit of profit and put that money back in somewhere else. My aim now is to use that money to increase my positions in some of my dividend paying stocks. 3M is a little bit expensive, but I can see me putting a bit more in for those dividends. I've also decided that I'm gonna add a bit to Johnson & Johnson because they've increased their dividends. McDonald's might get a bit more because that's opening up pretty soon. I'm holding off Microsoft a little bit now because I've got a bit too trigger happy with them, but I have no intentions of selling them whatsoever. I'm gonna stick with them right till the end. Realty income is definitely gonna get a bit more. I was waiting for them to drop under $50, but it looks like they might not right now. Uh, bit of a shame. Rio Tinto is getting it at the moment. It dropped down a bit after its dividend payment, so I've scooped up a bit. It's got some good press at the minute because China's opening back up. They're gonna want some iron, and these boys are gonna be digging it. Shell's still getting it. I like their outlook. They're still paying a dividend, and they're looking to the future now to reduce debt. I think that's a good thing, and that's me in for the long term. And I can see all of my ETFs, and Visa, and Walt Disney, all getting a bit more once everyone starts to get a little bit optimistic again. It's the thing at the moment, everyone seems to be a little bit cautious, holding onto their money, and that's why the markets just aren't moving anywhere. Everyone's just frozen. People see the economy opening back up. Maybe that's a bit of time for optimism. But then we're in that little bull run right now, which in history has shown that always precedes the next market crash. So people are still shit scared. So what's the best thing to do? Cost fucking average. Slow and steady wins the race, and over time, even though there's a few bumps in the road, everything will get better. Thanks very much for watching everybody. If you found it interesting, please feel free to give me a like and subscribe. The app that I use is called Trading212. If you're interested in investing and wanted to sign up, use my link in the description below. If you sign up through that link, you get a free share and one of my subscribers gets a free share as well. Also, if you have any questions, you can ask them in the comments below or you can join the Discord group. Everyone's really friendly in there. Everyone's really helpful. Have an ask and usually someone will be able to help you out. Thanks very much for watching today and don't forget to cost fucking average.